In this short problem, we're going to solve a very basic equation that deals with cost classification and then preparing a schedule of cost of goods manufactured and your income statement. So on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to see all the various costs that will happen in the company. And we're going to have to identify those costs by their classification. In other words, are they product costs or are they period costs? Then you, that's followed by uh, your sales figures and then followed by information you get from your accounting information system, your raw materials your work in progress, and your finished goods inventory balances, the beginning and the ending balances. You need all that information to be able to complete the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Now I've already set up the schedule of cost of goods manufactured so that you'll see the three product costs, materials, labor, and overhead, set up just like you'd see them in a typical schedule, followed by um, the reconciliation at the bottom with beginning work in progress, adding in ending inventory work in progress, and all that equaling the final amount, which is the cost of goods manufactured. That's followed by the income statement, which is your classic statement of sales minus cost of goods sold gives you gross margin, and gross margin less your selling and admin expenses gives you net income. So let's walk through and solve this. The first thing we have to take a look at is the cost on the top left-hand corner, and we need to identify each of those as either product costs, and if it's a product cost, is it materials, labor, or overhead? And then if it's not a product cost, that means it's a period cost. So let's start. The first one, the purchase of raw materials. All right, that is a materials cost, fairly straightforward. Depreciation on the factory. Now depreciation on the factory, uh, depreciation can be either a product or a period cost, but because it says the word factory in there, you know it's dealing with the production facility, which makes it a product cost, and that makes it manufacturing overhead. The insurance, because it's on the factory, it's also manufacturing overhead. Direct labor, that is a labor cost. The maintenance on the factory, again, because it's related to the factory, is manufacturing overhead. Administrative expenses, they're not materials, labor, or overhead, so therefore they are period costs. Utilities on the factory, they are manufacturing overhead. Supplies on the factory is manufacturing overhead. Selling expenses are period costs. And indirect labor is one of those manufacturing overhead costs. If you think back to when I did cost classification in the video for the week, you'll see that that was direct labor goes directly to work in progress, indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead. So what we've done now is basically identified all the costs appropriately. Now we can complete our schedule. So the first section is the materials section and that begins with beginning inventory for materials, we add our purchases, subtract ending inventory, and that gives us the cost of materials used in production. So you'll see that the formula is already there. It just says zero. As I put the numbers in, that will change. So let's start with our beginning work and pro our beginning materials inventory was 10,000. Our material purchases comes from the chart that we did over here. And our ending inventory comes back down here from the ending balance in inventory. So that tells us that the cost of materials used in production was $83,000. Next one is direct labor. That's one of the costs that was identified over here. So that one's complete. That's the second of the product costs. And then we have all of the manufacturing overhead costs. And if you go to the left-hand um, side of the screen, you'll see all the costs that say manufacturing overhead go in this list. So what I've done is already created a little formula that as I write the name of the cost in, it will put the figure in for me. So the first one is the depreciation in the factory, followed by insurance, followed by maintenance, followed by utilities, followed by supplies, and last one is indirect labor. So we have a total of $170,000 worth of um, overhead costs. Those are the actual costs. So if we add those three product costs up of materials of 83,000, labor of 60, and manufacturing overhead of 170, our cost of production were 313,000. We're not done though. That's the cost that we added to production. We have to add to that the beginning inventory for the period for work in progress. And then we're gonna subtract from that the ending inventory for work in progress. And that tells us that our cost of goods manufactured was $290,000. That schedule is now complete. Now you can move on to the income statement. First thing we start is with sales. We get that from the information given. And then the cost of goods sold, it's the classic inventory equation of beginning inventory plus, in this case here, cost of goods manufactured minus the ending inventory of finished goods gives you your cost of goods sold. 
So if we start with the beginning inventory, we add to that the cost of goods manufactured, which comes from the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Subtract from that the ending inventory for finished goods. Tells us the cost of goods sold was 260,000. If sales were 450,000, cost of goods was 260. That means the gross margin was 190. And all that's left are the administrative expenses. And we have two of them. The first one we have is the administrative expense. And the second one is the selling expense. And you'll see those total 150, which leaves us with a net income of $140,000. And that, folks, is how you'll solve both preparing a schedule of cost of goods manufactured and an income statement. The key thing in all of this is the very first part where we identified whether something was a product cost or a period cost. Once you can do that, it's just a matter of organizing the material and understanding what goes on each of the schedules.